morning, everyone. I'd like to talk a little bit today about baptism. What is baptism? What is it for? Do we have to be baptized or do we not have to be baptized? There's several questions that people want to know. And I see something here shortly that needs, I feel there needs to be taught on about baptism. And actually, if when you get right down to it, there are seven types of baptism mentioned in the Bible. Get that mic over a little closer, please. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What I was saying is that there's seven types of baptism been mentioned in the Bible. So we need to get into this to understand a little bit more about baptism. The first one is the baptism of Moses. And that's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through 3. Would somebody look that up? First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1 through 3. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat. That's one form of baptism. When the Israelites were delivered from slavery in Egypt, they were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. That is, they were identified with Moses and his deliverance by passing through the Red Sea and following God's presence in the cloud. Exodus 13, 21. Paul uses this comparison in the way that Christians are identified with Christ and his salvation. Those who followed Moses passed through the water and were thus and imitated into a new life of freedom and law keeping. Those who follow Jesus Christ, who is greater than Moses, pass through the waters of baptism and are I can't I can't <laughs> into a new life and a freedom of grace. That's the first baptism mentioned in the Bible. Okay, and the second one, the baptism of John. Mark 1, verse 4. Let somebody look that one up. <coughs> John the baptized in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. John preached repentance of sin and a preparation for the coming of the Messiah he baptized people in Jordan. Those who were baptized by John were showing their faith in John's message and their need to confess their sins. In Acts 18, somebody look up Acts 18, verse 24 and 25. And read that. born at Alexandria in an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. The man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of the Lord. Okay. Acts 19, verse 1 through 7. Somebody read that. Okay. Same to the people, they should believe on him who will come after him, 
So what Paul taught them the whole message of salvation in Christ, and they received the message and were subsequently baptized in Jesus' name. Okay, and the third one, which is the baptizing of Jesus, Matthew 3, chapter 3, verse 13 through 17. Can somebody read that? So he came to John to be baptized. Right? He came to John to be baptized. But John said, well, you should be baptized in me. Right. So what is Jesus saying here? It's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. It's the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do, yes. And every time Jesus says fulfill, he's usually talking about a, a previous prophecy. And he says fulfill, right? Well, you know, Jesus was a very meek person. So he asked John to baptize him instead of him baptizing John because this is the way it was supposed to be. But Jesus told John to proceed with the baptism. Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill the righteousness. In this baptism, Jesus put his stamp of approval on John's ministry and also began his own. Now, what are we saying? Oh, we got more people coming in? I'll say, Jesus never asked anybody to do anything that he wouldn't do. Absolutely. That's exactly right. He, he is the living example. Mm -hmm. that, this is why Jesus was so sincere about him being baptized. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's exactly what it is. As Jesus well, came up from the water... The Father spoke from heaven, and the Holy Spirit descended on his body from upon Jesus. And then he said, This is my Son, who I am well pleased. Okay, we got another one here. <laughs> where, where are we going now? We're going to baptize him by fire. Which chapter verse? Matthew showing? chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. Okay. I indeed baptize you with water into repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garden, <coughs> but he will burn up the chaff with an unquenchable fire. Immediately after mentioning the baptism by far, John describes Jesus as overseeing a harvest to come. This seems to be talking about the tears. Mm-hmm. Explain to me the wheat and the tares. The wheat and the tares. The tares is the evil that, that, that was planted by a, a bad person. Mm -hmm. And it grows among the people. And, you know, well, that's what he's talking about, us. You know, mm -hmm. It's the bad people being mixed with us. But you have 
Well, see, the wheat or the tares have to grow together to the adult size before you can tell them apart. Then what do they do with the tares? It's burned. Yeah, burn. And save the wheat, which is the good. Mm -hmm. And the farther story the bad. That's more or less what they're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, let me read like this. Uh, Psalm 22. Okay. If if we have people who are lost, mm -hmm. okay, which probably a lot of us, that's how we were converted, we come to the church. That's right? exactly right. Mm -hmm. So I was a tear, right? Right. Okay, say my mom and dad were Christians, and I was a young man, and I'm a tear. Mm -hmm. Okay? But they got me going to church, right? Mm -hmm. If you hurt me, you pluck me up, and you hurt me, you done hurt mom and dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, this this thing is what, what it is. If if I hurt the person that's invited, mm -hmm. make them feel unwelcome, and I hurt them, you know what mom and dad's going to do? He's going to go somewhere else. True. So we're in this. Mm -hmm. We all grow together. together. Mm -hmm. We all grow together. We have to grow together, or we don't survive. Those who are judged by Christ in the last days will be cast into a lake of fire. Just with the tail. Yeah, speak a little louder. I can't hardly hear you. I've talked to the Oh, yeah. It's only if you're Did you hear what you were saying? Here we go. Okay, number five. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. If I turn to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, 14. has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us to the kingdom of his son, his dear son, I'm sorry, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. That's the wrong one. I was in in chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. <laughs> In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. So what more or less they're saying, John predicted that Jesus would baptize men with the Holy Spirit. In Matthew uh, 3.11, it also states in here, this is a spiritual baptism, and it is the baptism that saves us. The baptism of the Spirit is what invites us into a new life in Christ. The first people to experience the baptism of the Spirit were the believers in Acts 2. On the day of Pentecost, the spiritual entity known as the body of Christ is formed by baptism. We were all baptized by the Spirit so as to form one body. They had what laid in their hands by being baptized. Mm -hmm. Well, see, there's only one Spirit of God, and that's the Spirit of God that we're baptized under. That forms us all in one body through the Spirit. Any comments on that, Pastor? No, y'all go ahead. I'm just... Thinking? I'm rolling. Yeah. <laughs> the baptism of the cross. Mark chapter 10, verse 35 through 39.
Mark 10, verse 30, uh, 35 through 39. Somebody read it. And, James, and John, the son of Zebedee, come unto him, saying, Master, would, would that thou should do for us whatsoever we shall desire? And he said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? They said unto him, Grant to us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink from the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of and with the baptism that I am baptized with all shall you be baptized. But okay. What verses were there, Dan? I didn't catch what verse there was. Uh, verse 35 through 39. Okay, thank you. Now what Jesus says, Jesus asked him, can you be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? <coughs> And they replied that they could, and Jesus confirmed it. You will be baptized with the baptized I am baptized with. And the baptism Jesus speaks of here is the suffering he has to endure. James and John would suffer as well. Make any sense? Jesus was going to suffer. And James, and James and John would also suffer equally well. Because there was Christians. They was preaching the gospel. Yeah. And God said, you would suffer in my name. Yeah. It's been like that since the beginning of the time since Jesus started preaching. Yeah. Anybody who preaches the gospel is going to suffer. Yeah. Because the world is against you. Says in there, we're suffering, you know, we're going right with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Christians are going to suffer because Jesus did. Mm -hmm. And we're Christ like. The baptism of believers. Somebody look up Matthew 28, verse 19. <laughs> Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So what are we saying here about water baptism? Water baptism pictures some wonderful spiritual truths. When we are saved, we are buried with Christ and rise to a newness of life. Our sins are washed away. So, Rod, is that telling you about baptism there? We're supposed to follow Christ rather than be baptized. Right. That we are. That is what he wants us to do. Baptism represents his death and resurrection. Right. Is what they're saying. And it's washed away all of our past sins. Mm hmm. Can you put the cart before the horse? Can we put the cart before the horse? No. I know a lot of, a lot of babies are baptized these days. To the Catholic Church. No, more. Can you be baptized before you're saved? No. I guess you can. I don't yeah. know if it does you any good or not. No, it don't do no good. Make you hold your breath for a little bit. I heard this preacher say one time, you can be baptized so many times, the bullfrog knows your first name. But if it's, not, if it's not done right, it'll do you good. Well, let me ask you this. All right. If you uh, take a baby to church to have it baptized, and you sprinkle <coughs> some water over it and call it a baptism, and you take it, go to home and give that baby a bath, what's the difference? Ah. The preacher did. He's not the same. 
Yeah. I agree, but let, let me give a comment. Okay. That's holy water. Children, because we have a youth camp and we have a baptism, mm -hmm. some children are taught well. Mm -hmm. They see it. Whether they really get it or not, mm -hmm. I think that it's in their life's process of learning. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I know our children were baptized. Right. Mm -hmm. They've been taken to Sunday school. Now what they're doing now in their life right. is their choice. But I, I don't think that they'll ever the baptizing didn't say it. It gets uh, planted a seed. But it does it does plant the seed yeah, that's right. of water baptism. It don't save you. It don't save you, it just plants the seed. <coughs> right. Yeah. Because you have to be saved before you can be baptized. Yeah, when the boys were in camps, I talked to Stephanie about that because I thought Good. if they want to get baptized, you know, do they really know what they're doing? And there you so, go. You know, that, like she mm -hmm. talked to me about, they might not fully understand, you know, the full meaning of the baptism, but they know it's a part of, of learning and loving Jesus and loving God. So Scripture says, suffer not the little children, for in so much is the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. we, we can't just... You, you push a little, if a, if a child comes up to be baptized with mom and dad, and you tell that child no, look what you've done to mom and dad. Mm -hmm. But the explanation of what's going on is, is mm -hmm. we're, we're in this to help people, to help them learn. And, and That's just a learning process. That's right. Yeah. When they and, accountable, I think that's when, you know, you're when, right. when, when you know you're <coughs> right from wrong and you know, do the right thing. Yeah. That's when you need to be baptized. Good intention. Yeah. yeah. Jesus at the age of 12 knows he had to be about his father's business. But that was Jesus, not so, us. Now, now think about this. Mm -hmm. Jesus began teaching, let's just use that at the age of 12. Mm -hmm. But when was he baptized? He was in his 30s. Before he was baptized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Right. So along with everything that went on, mm -hmm. he was still Jesus. That's right. Now, that gets into a debate. Well, if you're not baptized, and I've had that debate. We're going to get into that a little later. Go right into that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's other thing I watch, too, about especially kids. If you turn them away, that might have been, they might say, well, I had a chance to do it once and didn't do it, and they never do it again. And then what have you done? You become a stumbling block to that child. Some kids pay a little more attention to what people like. Well, I, you know, I accepted the Lord at about nine years old at Camp Whitney, and I was baptized, and I joined Antioch Church in 1957, and a lot of people told, you know, you're too young, you're too young, but I had a good Christian mother that was teaching Sunday school and was going to church faithfully, and she made sure that I continued on that road. Mm -hmm. You have to. Somebody had to set the spark somewhere. Okay, is baptism necessary for salvation? Now, we're not going to go too deep into this one, but we're going to go a little bit into it. The belief that baptism is necessary for salvation is also known as uh, baptism moral regeneration. It is our contention that baptism is an important step of obedience for the Christian. But we abnormally reject baptism as being required for salvation. You follow me there? Okay. Uh, we, yes, go ahead. Does ever, let me just ask the church. And, and I, go ahead. Do you believe just, and, and I'm not asking you if you're right or wrong because this is everybody who has an answer. That's right. Do you believe that if you've not been baptized, after you repent, say deathbed repent, are you going to make it into the kingdom or not? Yes. You want my opinion? Sure. I'll go back it up the scripture here in a few minutes. Yes. 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 You can be saved without being baptized. 
We strongly believe that each and every Christian should be water baptized, immersion. Baptism is straight to <coughs> believers' identification is Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized unto Jesus Christ were baptized unto his death? Therefore we are buried with him and baptism unto death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of his Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. The action is being immersed in the water illustrates dying and being buried with Christ. The action of coming up out of the water pictures Christ's resurrection. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Does somebody read that? Okay, read uh look up Mark sixteen sixteen. <coughs> he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So if you get baptized, are you saved? That's right. You have to be baptized and believe it in the heart. Oh, yeah. Okay, somebody look up John 3, verse 3 through 7. And read that, verse 3 through 7. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter into the set womb? Wow. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. <coughs> Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. Okay, do you have a comment on that? <coughs> but you have a comment on that one there? Well, you know, I, it's like we talked here a while ago. Uh, he tells us if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, we can be, we can be saved. Uh huh. <coughs> are we all born of our mother's flesh? We are. So we were born in the womb. Well, you think about being that when you're baptized. If you truly believe, when you're baptized, when you, when you're baptized, you go down as this as this person. But when you come up, if you truly believe, you're a, you're a true, di true and different person. Well, if you're born in your mother's womb, aren't you surrounded by water? Yeah. Yeah, you're born of water. Mm hmm Born of the flesh? Flesh is flesh? So you're born of your mother's flesh, but that is born of spirit, it is spirit. We're all born in sin. We come up to the altar and we find the Spirit there at the altar. God gives us the grace. So therefore, we are. Spirit is born in spirit. Even though we're all born in flesh of the woman. <laughs> to say that baptism is necessary for salvation, it is to say we must add our own good works and obedience to Christ's death in order to make sufficient for salvation. Jesus' death alone paid for our sins. Romans 5 eight, 2 Corinthians 5.21, 1 
Jesus' payment for our sin is appropriated to our account by faith alone. John 3, 16, Acts 16, 31, Ephesians 2, 8, 2, 9. Therefore, baptism is an important step of obedience after salvation, but cannot be required for salvation. So, do you have to be baptized to be saved? I just read scripture. I'm asking you the question. That's my answer. That's what I wasn't. Just about to go answer. No. Why, if you were able to be baptized, why would you not do it? Let me add that. Well, if you are baptized, that is a gesture to God. And to the church. It's a it's a part of the obedience of following God's yeah. will. Yeah. That's right. The gesture of being baptized is the gesture to God and to show the church that you're a Christian. Because there is the verses in here that said that uh, back in the old days, if you wasn't baptized, they didn't, they didn't consider you a Christian. Oh God. <laughs> Well, ago you started talking about Jesus being baptized. <clears throat> My dad got saved several years ago. It was a long time before he got baptized because mm -hmm. he let the devil get in his mind that, well, I don't want to do it for show. Mm -hmm. And I told my dad, I said, well, believe it or not, Dad, that is the only thing you do as a Christian for show. You're showing the world a change. Mm -hmm. You're coming out from among the world. You're showing you're a different person now. And, you know, I right. told him, I said, Jesus <coughs> got baptized and set the example, so why shouldn't we do it and follow him? That's the first act of obedience after you're a Christian to get baptized, if you can. Mm -hmm. You certainly ought to. Well, and Jesus had a very strong... I don't want to say habit, but he had a very strong practice. When he called people, he called people publicly. I'm not sure he ever snuck off to the side with anybody and said, hey, you know, come over here and follow me. Everybody that he brought to himself, he did publicly. And of course, we all know he says, you deny me in front of man, I'll deny you in front of the Father. That's right. It is a public expression of your obedience to God. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's meant to be done in public. It's meant to be done in front of your brethren and your fellow believers. Mm -hmm. I think that's true. Yeah. Well, if you would just sneak off you and the preacher and get baptized and nobody knows about it, it'd just be between you and the preacher and God. The church wouldn't be involved in it. But baptism is something the church needs to be involved in. Yes? I, I got it. <laughs> I like it when you hold your hand up. That means I'm up here and you're back there. <laughs> uh, should you, this this is just, <coughs> say, say you repented, you followed the gospel, you, you baptized, right? Yes. If you backslide, not, not the same people, and you go out into the world, you come back to God, which he, you know, draw nine people, should you do your first work? Should you be baptized again? That's your own view. If you was baptized the first time? Yes. I think you, the Bible always says you'll have to baptize one time. It also says do your first work. Mm -hmm. If you were saved, baptized, backslid, come back to God, which that's one. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. Absolutely. Do you think you should? Or everybody should, or are you okay? I'm not the judge. No, I'm not this, this is a question that people <clears throat> simply ask. 
Right. I was baptized when I was 15. I was baptized when I was 20. My dad was an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. He just straightened up, went to church, he was baptized. He went back to being an alcoholic, then he got back into church. He was an alcoholic for years. He got back, thank God, mm -hmm. got back in church. He said, I don't need to be baptized. Mm -hmm. I'm not judgmental. I'm just saying, people have individual choices. That's right. Okay? And mm -hmm. if I felt like I need to be baptized again, like the one that knows the tadpoles or whatever, Mm -hmm. I just go under and get it again. Absolutely. It's my conviction. Right. Well, like I should do it. Now I'm going to make another point. Mm -hmm. Joining the church, I had when I was a young Christian. Right. Many moons have passed. Uh, an individual asked me to be baptized into the church, not baptism by God. I didn't do it. You, I, I wouldn't think you could. Okay, well, you do. But they, this makes you a full-fledged member. But it's not about being the member of the church. Mm -hmm. It's about being baptized. That's right. It's about being baptized. It's a member of God's church. It's, not, it's being baptized. Mm -hmm. You know, my, we it's, don't want anybody baptized to the church. The that, that's correct. That's correct. Nobody can be baptized into the church. It don't work. And nowhere in the Bible did I ever read where it said that. When you're baptized, you're baptized through Jesus Christ for the church. To be a part of the church, but not into the church. You fall into your Christian brothers and sisters. And you show it through baptism. To be part of the church. Not to be into the church. Now that's how I look at it, and I may be wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. That our salvation and our baptism is a personal thing between you and God. That's between you and God, yes. 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 That's like, I mean, why does people try to see you do it? You know, between you and the Lord. Mm -hmm. Philip baptized the eunuch. Yeah, yeah there in the water, yeah. holding the dead. That's right. Was just witness. two of them, too, wasn't it? That's the witnesses. He had a witness. Absolutely. And what did that eunuch do? He went back and constructed a great big church. But what about being saved and baptized on the same day? As long as you're saved first. Because that's how I was. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you know, I had gone to church when I was young. I knew everything. But I had, I, I, you know, <coughs> between you and God, right there. Nobody else wasn't in it. It was you and God. Remember when he had to baptize. Well, he might have had a hand in it. <laughs> well, I told her, she told me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you what happened. I was sitting there and I was watching and I was watching all these people get baptized and I was watching all these people get baptized. I was watching all these people get He, he touched me with that spirit that day. He touched me with the spirit all the time with that day. He touched me. He really did. And uh, I'm just so glad. I'm so thankful. So thankful. That's amazing grace. Mm -hmm. It is. Not, not that. People have 
particular <coughs> testimony, mm -hmm. what God has done for them, and the movement. That's right. And it all comes to the same point, same That's place, right. being saved. But God works in mysterious ways to get to the what we think is the lowest of the low, mm -hmm. to what some people think they're the richest of the richest. But God's got a plan to whosoever will. That's right. Not where you're from, not who you think you are. He's got a plan for you, but you're going to do his will, not your own. That's right. Jo Jonah had a plan too, didn't he? Yeah, Jonah had a different plan. Didn't work out. <laughs> Yeah, so whoever will, let him come and take a little water of life freely. Don't cost anything. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, we're going to have to move a little bit through here a little fast. Ephesians 4, verse 4 through 6. There is only one body and one spirit, just as they are called, to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptized. One God, one Father of all who is over all, to all, in all. Since there are different baptisms referred to in the New Testament, it can be a bit confusing when we read about one baptism. The word baptized also means to submerge or immerse. So when baptism is discussed, it involves a person being totally submerged into something else. Baptism implies being all in. It also implies that a change has taken place. <coughs> Baptized people are changed people. <coughs> now, I look at it, and my, now this is my personal feeling here. My personal feeling is that when I kneel down there and ask for him to save me from my sin, that I was baptized right there by the blood. Now that's how I personally feel. Now everybody else has their own, you have to work out their own salvation. But I'll just say it. Yeah, but we got you in the water. <laughs> well, yes. I got into water. Yes, I did. Twice. Yes, you did. And I hope twice was enough. If not, I'll go in the third time. <laughs> but that's my salvation, not yours. Mm -hmm. My wife got baptized. She was 16 years old. They had to break the ice. She wanted to be baptized so bad. They broke the ice and made places for her to be baptized. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to skip through a lot of this here. I'm going to go to Romans 6, verse 3. Speak of spiritual baptism. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized unto Christ Jesus were baptized unto his death? The spiritual baptism into Christ is performed by the Holy Spirit. The movement of repentant sinners accepted the gift of salvation and is born again. Now, there's a little more, but I'm going to stop right there. Wednesday or go through Wednesday if you want. Okay, if you want me to finish it there. But where I get my stuff from, probably y'all thinking, well, he comes up with the craziest stuff to be teaching on. I get it in my sleep. I'll be woke up 3.30 in the morning. That's why I usually get my stuff. And he woke me up this morning. And give me a parable. Now the parable is, we're going to bake a cake. We're going to use three parts. We're going to use three parts Father, three parts Son, three parts Holy Ghost. And we're going to bake a beautiful cake. And then we're going to sit back and we're going to enjoy this cake because everything we want is right there in that cake. But while we are sitting there eating that cake and enjoying it, you go to looking and you feel that there's something missing. When you bake a cake and you take it out of the oven and you get ready to eat it, what's missing on the cake? The icing. The icing. I don't like icing. <laughs> but, uh, once we put the icing on the cake, are we going to do the chocolate icing, strawberry icing, vanilla icing, or what kind of icing? And uh, some people don't even like icing. Like now we've got this gracious cake here. There's a cake of life, 
And now we got all these people, some of them want chocolate, some of them want vanilla, some of them want strawberry icing on their cake. That's because we're all different. And the icing on the cake is baptism. That puts it all together. Yeah. That's what covers the cake and makes it right. Well, what works for you, like what works for you don't work for me. <laughs> what works for you don't work for me. It's your own salvation. Chocolate cake or vanilla cake? Yeah. That's up to you. <laughs> that's up to you. But just remember what's in the cake. That's where it counts. I'm going to stop right there because my time's up.